Everybody here has been here before. So you know what happens next. Who has the first question? C1. Thank you. Um, would you apply this passage to the type of friendship evangelism? How to, how to put this? I grew up with the type of friendship evangelism that says, if I invite you to church and you invite me to church, then I'll come to church with you. So I went with my family to a Buddhist temple once in an effort for a sibling to then pursue this Buddhist. Um, the same sibling has done other ceremonies with other unbelievers in an effort to say, now you come to my church. Would you apply this passage to that, and what would you say to that kind of friendship evangelism? Like, how would you apply this passage to that? How would you would you say that would be causing that that person to stumble? Like, we're, we're undermining ourselves or shooting ourselves in the foot as far as evangelism goes? Yeah, that's that sounds to me like uh, shooting everybody in the foot and other places. Quite frankly, um, I, I suppose if I can get a commitment from my neighbor who wants me to attend a, I don't know, what? A Hindu service. I don't even have services. I don't know. And if I say to them, okay, um, I'll attend your Hindu service, um, but I just don't want you to become a, to come to my, my church service. I want you to believe in Christ. I'll come to your service if you believe in Christ. And that's, that's ridiculous. Nobody's going to say that. So I, I, I could never buy into that, well, I'll trade with you, you trade with me. Why are we trading? Christ is Lord. What's the trade? We, we have nothing to trade there anyway. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have a like, try to trade Christ. So would you use this passage then to refute that with another Christian? I would. And other passages as well. <coughs> and again, I, I know we've talked about this before, but we, we did this in 1963. The church, it wasn't, it wasn't the church's job to do it. Okay, you keep Christ out as long as you keep everybody else out. Little deals like that we make with pagans always come back to bite us. Always. If, we, if we're making these little trade-offs, we're not proclaiming Christ as Lord and King. We're, we're, we're proclaiming Him as another option. We can't do that. Because He's not. Who else has a question? Good question right here. Actually, just a comment. Um, talking about idolatry, addictions are idolatry. And we are, our, our culture is full of idolatry in so many different facets. Um, we have all materialism and all kinds of things become idolatry. So for what we're seeing today in this culture, we are steeped in idolatry in so many different ways. That's my perspective. Well, we have... We'll have the images coming eventually. But right now we're in that, in that transition stage, if you will. We don't have the images, but they're, they're coming. They're absolutely coming. And then it'll be, it, at that point, there'll be a lot more obvious. But see, we, what, what we as believers must understand that if, if we ourselves, you know, we can say, well, we don't really believe in Christ, I don't think about Christ, don't believe in Christ or whatever. But I don't have any idols either. But we got to understand that if we, if, we, if we reject Christ, we have nothing but idols left. That's it. That's the only alternative left. Calvin was right. Our hearts are idol factories. If we don't believe in Christ, we're going to make them up. We, yeah, if we it's, it's hard enough. That's hard enough. Even if we believe in Christ, it's hard enough. We, we have 6,000 human, years of human history to demonstrate this. Everybody's got an idol someplace. Leave Christ out of it. Who else has a question? Good job. More. More comment than a, than a question. Again, it, it's interesting how often idolatry and sexual immorality are linked together. The, the Balaam Balak connection. Uh, so Balaam yep. enticed the Israelites to. Uh, Marry, intermarry with Canaanites, and then the Canaanite wives brought in the idols. It's just fascinating how often the idolatry and the immoralities in the same list 
the other. And then, so yeah, exactly. We saw that here from First Corinthians chapter seven, talking about proper rules of merit that goes right into the idolatry thing, right there. Yeah, well said. Uh, Baal and Balak. How is he going to destroy the children of Israel? He's going to destroy their families. You know, um, moms and dads, you want to keep your children away from idolatry? Be faithful to your spouse. Go a long way. Can you imagine, can you imagine a dad who's, who's, who's cheating on his wife to then try to convince his children not to worship idols? It would be a hard job. Frankly, impossible. I saw another hand. Maybe I did. Just the football thing. I think it's so so what do you do about that? Like how do we talk about that? How do we I mean is the next generation is it gonna be video games? How many kids are holed up in a house for hours every day? And aren't we just yeah. create and they seem so acceptable. Yeah, always dangerous to mention something. I, I really went back and forth whether or not I was gonna mention football or not because you know, once you can just it just go out from there, and it's not football. You know, it's it's, it's not the little round thing, and it's not the people stand, it's not the gridiron, it's not the people in the seats, it's not well, it. That's why I think it's like the music, it's not the right. right. I, I, it's, it seems to me we should always ask this question: What are you trying to trade? That is what well, I, I believe will tell us what what we have in over time. You know, we have. A, problem with this because we'll say something, what do you define idolatry by? What do you spend most of your time doing? A lot of men I know spend most of the time working. Is that an idol? No. Could be, but not necessarily. But what are they trading? Um, I've known people who trade almost anything for a football game. They will trade time with, they, they will trade loving their wife they will trade uh, loving their children. They will absolutely trade uh, time with other beliefs in church because they just happen to be there. Oh, we've got, we got a problem at this point. It's what are you trading? It seems to me that's the first question you always have to ask. You are trading something. Because idols, idols will not leave you room for Christ. It's, it, it, it's just one. You're going to have if you want idols, you have to get a Christ. You're not going to. I'm sorry, this goes hand in hand with this. Um, in a former church, and this was back in my life, um, there was a Sunday morning service and a Sunday evening service and the whole nine yards. And like you said, you know, had this sort of sense of legalism that you right. didn't find. But I remember being really awakened by the fact that idolatry was coming into play when the evening service was canceled because of the football game. Oh, boy. That would be the Super Bowl. Oh, my. Oh boy. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of churches have begin to accommodate with uh, Super Bowl with Sunday evening or, or whatever. And you know, I, I one of the problems that we have is and, and, and I know when I was growing up we were in church every time the doors were open. Well now wait a minute. So we had Sunday morning, Sunday evening, we had Tuesday night, we had Thursday night, right? And then we had other things going on. You mean to tell me that I'm an idolater if I don't go there every time doors are open? Really? Well, let's ask myself, what am I doing with my time? See, what if, yeah, what, what if a person, um, what if a person here who couldn't come to church this morning because that, that, that man had to stay home with his, his wife who was sick? Has he made his wife an idol because he wasn't in church? No. He's just doing the right thing in the circumstances. That's all he's doing. That's what we have to keep in mind. What are you actually doing? What are you actually trading? And when you're trading one thing, you know, a husband's supposed to take care of his wife. He's doing the right thing that morning. He's obeying God, even though he's not in church. That's all another. Yeah. Um, okay, um, another thing that's a major idol for modern Christians these days is not just, it is like the, the, the worship service itself is an idol. 
and people don't really pay attention to Christ at all. They're like, oh, I'm going to go to church and you know, worship the worship. Mm. Nice. <laughs> uh, see, this, this is where you're always worried about these, these questions and answers. So. Um, let me address it this way. I, I, I get concerned when, how do I say this? There are times when I hear about somebody's experience at church and it doesn't sound that much different from somebody's experience at the concert. That concerns me. It really felt good. It was a great time. Not that church can't be that. But we always have to be concerned. This is the concern right here. If at church I don't meet God through His Word, if I don't meet, if that does not happen, then I'm ultimately going to lose my church. As I should. Because all the other things that we talk about in the church, and let's go through them. Uh, the music, the sense of community, the entertainment value, sometimes. I know the church, a large church, has just put in a, sounds pretty cool, a uh, sliding board, a huge sliding board in the church. And so it's really fun because the little kids, and when they go to their class, and now, instead of going down the stairs, I'm going to slide on the slide board. That sounds pretty cool, right? Is that really, really wrong? But you, see, you see what's happening here. we got entertainment, I mean, all kinds of other things. And you know what? If you want to talk about sense of community, if you want to talk about entertainment value, if you want to talk about music, i got news for you. The pagans are so much better than us, better than that than we are. We're going to lose them all. If you want to talk about community, they can do it better than we can. You want to talk about entertainment? They can do it better than we can. You want to talk about music? They can do it better than we can. If we don't beat God through His Word in our church, then we might as well be paying. And we might as well lose our people. Because they're going to go to where the real action is after a while. To actually further that line of thought, um, I would argue that that kind of a worship experience in a church is a symptom of a bigger problem, which is and idolatry of self. And it's like you said, that old McDonald thing, here God, there God. Um, worship is, they're, they're going to worship the worship, but they also worship themselves because oftentimes you, you see churches that you're not going to meet God in His Word, you're going for whatever. These are the same churches that their congregation will show up at the abortion clinics and they'll say, well, I love Christ, He'll forgive me for what I'm about to do. And they're their sexual immorality, their desire for self that then culminates in the murder of their own child, like it, it just spreads out to their life like a poison. It's idolatry of everything. They've got the God of their myself, but then it's also manifesting these little things like worship that I like, a service that I like, my sexual immorality, you know, I my life, so I'm going to sacrifice my child for it. There's all these little idols in their lives because the ultimate idol is self. And so when you have a church that they're not meeting God, the, the congregation will be making their own gods. We always have to be super careful with this. Um, remember, uh, this is an amazing thing to me. I don't really understand it. But we have a in John, the Apostle John, Good guy. <clears throat> Real good guy. Had a problem with idolatry. Remember? And of all places, can you remember where? Of all places, to have a problem with idolatry. Can you remember where John, the great apostle, had a problem with idolatry? Can you remember where it was? I know something you know. He's just not saying. He was in heaven. Remember? And he wanted, to, he wanted to bow down and worship an angel. He had a problem with idolatry in heaven of all places. It's just never far away from us. 
You see, here's the thing about worship, and, and, and you know, like, like uh, I give you an example. I love the Hallelujah Chorus. We've had these huge arguments in our home over the Hallelujah Chorus. Well, that's the greatest piece of music ever written, or not. Now, big arguments over this. Now, does this, does, does my experience with the Hallelujah Chorus, does that, does that cause me to worship the Christ of the Hallelujah Chorus or something else? You see, we, we, we don't want to stand up and say, well, you know what, it's, as long as you hate the music in church, you must not be an idolater if you hate the music. If the sermon is really boring, I'm not making this an idol out of the pastor. He stinks. I must be okay. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is whatever happens in that church, does it glorify and honor Christ? Or does it give me that experience of I just, I just have my own? I, I met myself. I met me. That was pretty good, I guess. That's the, di that's the difference. A lot going on here with this idolatry thing. I always intrigued that over John. John, you're in heaven. You're in heaven, John. He wants to worship an angel. Of course, the angel tells him not to do that. You remember what I'm talking about right now, now that I mention it? Yeah. Well, thank you for your kind attention here this morning. Thank you. 